G'day Jaffa Adventures, Terry King here. Welcome to the channel. So I've recently peeled about 1400 bucks out of my wallet and handed it over to Emu Wing. So what I'm going to do is replace the left and right rear glass here with the Gullwing Emu Wing windows. So I've done a little bit of research on this and the jury is out on these things. Some people have fed back to me that they're fantastic and they love them. Others have fed back that they leak like a sieve and they let dust in like crazy and they'd never buy them again. So, you know, what, what's, a, what's a person to do when you've got that sort of feedback? I'm going to take a chance that I can install these and make them leak proof should they leak. And that's what this journey is about. We'll watch the install and then I'll go out on a trip, three week trip or so out into Outback New South Wales where it's going to be seriously dusty and we'll put these suckers to the test and see whether they leak or not. Let's get stuck into this, shall we? Now the main reason that I want to put these emu wings in is because I can't access that back corner by the cargo barrier. Got a lovely set of drawers here which are just cheapos from Big W and sitting in behind these drawers are typically my cartons of beer or soft drink or some cartons of water that sort of stuff and when I want to restock the fridge I got to pull all of this crap out to get to the back there and that's just a giant pain in the backside so that's the idea with installing these emu wings in the two back windows. So there's our box pretty decent size Let's cut her open and see what we've got inside. Looks to be packed up pretty decently. That'll be one side along with its frame. No doubt the fixings and destructions. And there's the other side. bit of promotional material, the pack list, a little bit of destructions, the obligatory sticker, and the bits, some Sikaplex 291, our dust seals, little rubber feet, the gas struts, four hinges, pack of bolts, the keys, and what do you know, an emu wing bottle opener. Good on you guys. Now I have got two serious challenges with the fitment of these emu wings. My first one is this drawer system. This trim back here has to be notched to allow for the hinges. So you've got to pull these trim pieces off and a bit of the head lining to actually get to that trim piece. Now that wouldn't be that difficult if I didn't have these drawers in here because you could access all of that. And I'm not keen on pulling these drawers out. I've got them wired in here. So there's an air compressor on one side and all of my electrical wiring on the other side which is actually affixed to the drawers. So I'd rather not pull these out if I can avoid it. That's challenge number one. Challenge number two is going to be removing these windows. Now the destructions say get a glazier to do it for you. I'm going to give it a crack myself and see how I go. May end up breaking them. I hope not, but hey, I'll give it a crack anyway. I do have some glass removal tools that might assist. So as I mentioned in the intro, I have never pulled one of those back glasses out of a car before. So that's going to be an adventure and I'm sure it'll be a giant screw up somehow. But to give myself the best chance possible, I went out and splurged on eBay for a whole 20 bucks and got this glass removal kit. I got no idea how this thing bloody works. That there, so if I was going to guess, I'd say that's a trim tool to pop the little clips off your trim. That must be a knife type affair that you slide in between the glass and the panel perhaps. Well this is an easy one. A couple of twisty handles and some steel cable. So you can cut the seal and this one here that must be a knife to cut the seal as well so maybe you pop it in there and pull with the handle something like that and I don't know what that is 
as they said in the movie Flying High, a hat, a brooch, a pterodactyl. Anyway, let's go see if we can break some glass. All right, it's time to pull some trim off and it's really difficult to video it. Well, I've got that one pulled away anyway. That big sucker along there, that one's pulled away. One along the back is pulled away. I just gotta get this top sucker off and that's not easy. I've also disconnected the radio antenna which is attached to the glass. Now this top trim is a bugger because it's got these little black clips that are attached to this headlining. And you gotta get them out these little holes somehow. So I can't get those little black suckers off. So I'm gonna get a pair of side cutters and trim the little nubs off. That's got him. That's got him. And don't tell me there's one at the back. All right, I got that trim piece out. And this is where those little black clips were fixed into. And there's just no way you can twist them and get them out of those holes. But I don't think that's too much of a drama because these clips still clip up underneath of the hood lining. To keep it there, one, and two, we actually notch this out and our brackets hold this in place as well. That's the plan. All right, we'll get a blade in here and start by cutting this trim off. Again, I got no idea whether this is the right thing to do or not. But it's sort of forward progress. I've got a very sharp brand new Stanley knife blade here. And I'm cutting these rubbers off. This is now the driver's window. And I'm just trying to get a bit of close-up stuff so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Well, there's one good thing. I got the edge of the glass in here in sight now. So I've taken my Stanley knife, removed that trim around the perimeter, and I do have the edge of the glass in sight now. So that's a good thing. All okay, right, we'll take this fancy tool, which I think is meant to poke a wire through here and see. Oh yeah, yep. There it is, it's popped out the other side of the glass. Okay, that's progress. I'm not sure how, but it's progress. So this little tool here has been my most handiest. It's been able to slide up between the glass and the body, and I can run that along. And cut the seam. If I lever that glass on the bottom, that's actually free. So I think we'll do the same along here and along the top edge. Now I've gone around the entire perimeter cut this glass and it's just sitting there now but there are four sneaky clips on the, each corner of this glass I got the two front ones off I still got to get the two back ones so I'm going to take this glass in place because I don't have a helper to catch it okay I'll go around the back side and pop those two clips off and you get them off just with your simple trim tool Those clips are off. Now, will this glass come out? Yep, it's coming. Voila! Got it! Yes! See these four little clips holding the corner of the glass in? Unbelievable. Ha <laughs> ha 
happy. All right, I've got that gasket cleaned up a little bit. Still need to do some more work to that one before we can get too much further. But it's telling me to fit the frame and mark this trim panel for trimming. That is roughly where that frame goes. All right. That's marked for trimming. So let's trim that up and then reaffix the frame and see whether we've trimmed it far enough. Okay, trimming time. <laughs> pretty good on that one. Here we have her trimmed up and we'll just do a test fit now. Okay, pop the trim piece back in place. That's in where it belongs. Grab our frame. Alright, that frame sits in that notched panel just perfect. Jesus, somebody would think I know what I'm doing. Next step I'll try and clean is that Sikaflex up as much as I can. So here's something I'm not happy with and I'm not sure whether it'll show up on camera or not. But all along here is where the original window rubbers have been rubbing up against the panel. And it's actually wore through the paint here. I've got a couple of scrapes here and there in the panel from when I was pulling the glass out. But that, those scrapes are actually covered up by the window frame itself. However, that bit there that's worn from the window rubber does not get covered up. You can actually see that. And I'm not happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'll mask this up and I've got a little bit of 1G3 paint left over from my bonnet. And I'm actually gonna paint that window frame and cover that up again. It means a little bit extra work, but that's all right. This car is not my primary driver for work, so it can sit here with the windows out in the shed while this paint goes off. So that's what we'll do. I'll hit it with some 400 grit and then some 600 grit wet, and then we'll spray some color. And that just about does it. We'll tape it up fully and hit, hit it with some color. Well, it's the following morning now. I'm ready to get stuck into it again. And what I find is when you do have a good sleep, your, your brain actually sort of works on things unconsciously. And during that time, I've given some more consideration to this. So as you know, I've sanded this all back and I'm going to paint it. And the reason for that was those rubbers that were rubbing on the paint were just, um, yeah, it just gave it too big of a dull area. But then I got thinking about this frame here. That frame is black. Now I know you don't see it when the emu wing is closed, but when it's open, you do. I'm going to be spraying this anyway with 1G3, so I think what I'll do is I'll mask this frame up and I'll spray the frame itself as well. It'll just help it blend in there a little bit more when the emu wing's open. Now the emu wing itself, is a piece of black aluminium and I'm going to keep that black. I think if I was to spray that the same color as the car, yeah, the car would just look too slab sided and I don't like that look. So I think I'll keep these the way that they are. But that internal frame, we'll definitely paint that one G3 same color as the car. The first thing I'm gonna do is scuff these up with a bit of 600 grit paper so that it gives our paint something to bite on. All right, that's scuffed up. Now we'll taper up. We'll grab the other one and do the other side. Time to tape this up. Protect the car from overspray.
there we have it that will allow me to spray that entire area without getting any overspray on the car so we'll clean that up with some wax and grease remover mix up some paint and shoot some color we've got some clear we've got some hardener we've got some color Start by mixing up about 50 ml of color. Mix that up. That's the sort of consistency that I was looking for. Okay, we'll add that to our gun. here just to get any crap off of the surface that's going to be painted inside of these frames lovely do our edge first Okay, that's our final coat of clear. And it looks pretty nice and glossy. So we'll pull the pin there and clean the gun. Okay, our paint is dried. Let's peel our tape off now. See what we've got.
Okay, there's our frame. There's our window opening all cleaned up. Let's set our frame in there. Here's our window frame in the sunshine. And that's come up an absolute treat. It's beautiful. Really happy with that. That looks really good because it's blended in the same color as the truck. You can't even really notice it when it's open. And that was the look that I was going after. So that's pretty exciting. Made some really good progress. Now the next step is to actually glue these window frames in. And you know what? You guys are going to have to hit subscribe if you want to see that. Because that's going to be coming up in an upcoming episode. I hope you've learned something. I certainly have. I now know how to make two gigantic holes in the side of a Land Cruiser without too much damage, which is a pretty awesome thing. So join me next time when we fit these window frames. Have a great one, everyone. Keep shiny side up. We'll see ya.